Okay, welcome to our Google Fridays. We are so excited y'all can be here. Um, today we're going to be doing Google Forms and presenting this is going to be the wonderful Christine, Christine Waring, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, if you have any questions at all, please go ahead and put them in the chat box and we will be answering them here at the end or periodically just depending on what the question is. Um, but here we go. Go ahead, Kristen. Welcome, everyone. I always want to say good morning, and I realize it's now afternoon, so I'm not going to say good morning. I'm going to say good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us once again for our Google Friday presentations. And I'm excited to see a couple of new faces here today, um, a lot of people that have been here for several of ours. So I'm glad to have the following. Thank you very much. Um, so today we're going to be answering the question, what in the world can I do with Google Forms? So to get us started, some of you may have already filled out this, this questionnaire. If you have, just give us a couple of minutes. Um, Mariah, can you put, oh, she looks like she's already got it up in the chat. So the link is in the chat on the meet here. Go ahead and click on that and take just a couple minutes to fill out this form. It will give you, I'm going to put two minutes on the timer, so try to do it quickly. Um, but it will give you an opportunity to see some of the different types of questions that are available in Google Forms. So if any of you have just joined us, um, I reposted the link in the chat. We're doing a connection activity, a forum. If you could take a few minutes to fill that out, that would be great. And it looks like we've got about 30 seconds left. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to this next page. And so now that you've all had a chance to answer, if you're still working on it, go ahead and finish up. Um, I want to show you a little bit about this form that, that you just uh, participated in. So for those of you that have not used Google Forms before, um, what you're looking, what you saw on your screens was what the students will see or people that you are sending the form to. Um, as far as my end, you can see I've got a whole list of different things with different types of questions. Um, and I wanted to kind of show you some of the things that you just answered what they look at it like on this end. So this first one that you answered, have you used Google Forms before, is just a multiple choice question, two answers or two choices, very simple to do. Um, I made different sections because if you do not do sections when you're creating your form, um, when somebody goes to answer the questions, they're going to see the whole form all at once. And sometimes that's appropriate. Sometimes it's not. So depending on the use that you're making of this, you may want to put in different sections. Um, so in section two, 
The second question is a multiple choice grid answer. So if I go, um, if I click on this question, when you look up here, when you're creating a question, you have a drop down menu that gives you different choices of types of questions that you can use. For this one, I've used the multiple choice grid. There's also a checkbox grid, which I have not used, um, but it will work much the same way um, as what you guys saw in that second question. Um, the, the third question, I gave you a video to watch. You most likely haven't watched the video because you only had two minutes to answer but you can always go back and watch it later. It's kind of fun. Um, this is something that you could also do with your students. You can give them that uh, video to watch and then ask a question or questions that are related to that video. So as you can see, this next question type that I gave you was a checkbox question. And the checkboxes, what that allows you to do is put a whole bunch of different answers or choices in here and the students or whoever's answering can click as many as apply. So you could have clicked one answer or you could have clicked 10 answers or you could click all of them, totally up to you. Um, the next type of question I used was a fill in the blank. This is a short answer text. It's just a one line. If your answer is gonna be just a word or a number or a, a um, simple sentence answer, this is a good choice. Um, things like asking for a name or an address or a date, those would all be short answer texts. Um, now, I also did an additional thing on here, which is the, uh, I told it that all of my answers needed to be in whole numbers. So um, this is the answer validation. And you can find it down here in these three dots at the bottom. So when I click on that, sorry, response validation is what it's called. And it allows me to change. I can say I want my answers to be only text or only numbers. I can say how long I want it to be. I can say I need it to contain a specific set of words. So you can kind of change these around. For this one, when I asked you how many types of questions you think are in Google Forms, I set this for numbers. You can also tell when you're doing numbers you can say you want it something greater than a certain number or less than. You could say you want it to be an exact answer um, between two sets of numbers. There's lots of different choices when you're making these kind of questions. Um, and then you can give instructions. So I said, please answer in numeric form. Um, so that's kind of a fun type of question you can use. Uh, this next one, you can see I included an image in this one. Um, if you were talking about teaching from home, which of the following would you use? And so this is, and I'm going to have to refer back to here. This is the drop down um, type of question. So you can put any number. There's not a limit on how many answers you can supply. But with the drop down uh, choice, they could still only choose one answer. So multiple choice in the job drop down questions, they can only choose one answer. If you want them to be able to choose multiple answers, you need to use the checkbox um, type. And then down here, the next one, we did a scale. So you can see um, this just gives you a scale to 1 to 10. You can um, edit all of this. So you can tell it right here from what number to what number. Um, you can label the beginning and end to say what you want. And this is the linear scale type of question. Okay, and then in my final section, um, this is the long answer text. This is if you, you can use this if they're going to be writing you a paragraph or um, if you want feedback and they may be giving you a longer amount of feedback than just one sentence. Um, so here I've put the question um, for this particular one. Again, down here in the three dots at the bottom, this is where you're going to find different choices. So in this case, I added a description. And that gives you this little second line here where you can put a little bit more information. OK, so this is the long answer text. Um, I can't tell you exactly how long the answer can be because I haven't come across anything that was too long to put in here. 
Um, so a couple of paragraphs, a single paragraph, depending on what purpose you're using it for, um, the long answer text might be the appropriate choice for question types. So now what I want to go up here and do, I want to show you the response page. So you can see when you're creating this form, up at the top we have a question tab, we also have a responses tab. And if I go over here, there's two different ways to view your responses. So based on the questions that you just answered, um, we have we have these graphs, right? This this whole thing, and we're going to go down here and look at them. But you also have tabs here, so you have a summary. This is showing you everybody that answered and the graphic representation of their answers. Um, if you go to question, okay, this is showing you by question how many responses there were. So here I'm looking at the very first question, have you ever used Google Forms before? My two choices were yes and no, and I can see that five out of the nine people chose yes and four chose no. And then if I wanna to go to the next question, I can click this and go and look at each question individually. Um, or alternately, I can click on individual and I can see what just one person. Now, I didn't ask for names on this one. This was an anonymous one. So this isn't going to help me very much because I can't see what this one person was doing. But if you were using this for an assessment for your students and you had them put a name, you could go down here and you could see the exact answers that each student gave individually for the whole, the whole form. So it's kind of nice that way. I want to go back to summary real quick because I think this is really cool and it's fun to be able to share with your class or with your colleagues depending on what you're using this for. So that simple, that first question, have you ever used Google Forms before? It's simple yes or no question. It gives you a guide over here to the colors and you get your percentage. It gives you this nice little pie chart. So you have a visual representation of a few more people have used Google Forms but there's quite a few people that say, no, they haven't. Um, this was our grid, our multiple choice grid. And you can see um, we do not have a teacher that does not know their multiplication tables. This was because I asked someone to do it incorrectly so we could look at this. Um, but you can see it shows you the correct answers. It shows you how many people got the wrong answers and in that bar graph form. This was the checkbox one. So we can see that it looks like out of all of those colors, the most common ones are forest green and dark blue. That's kind of surprising to me. Um, so gathering statistical information is something you can do here with these forms. Um, here, how many different question types do you think are available? This looks like there's a lot of different um, ideas. And remember, I did not give you um, answers. These were write-in answers. So the correct answer for this, which it looks like nobody got, is nine. There are nine different um, question types that you can use when making Google Forms. So not a hundred. That would be really cool, but I don't think I would be able to choose. Um, okay, so this one, here's another pie graph. This was another multiple choice one. Um, and actually, I believe this was our drop-down one. So it comes in a pie graph as well, it gives you a color coding, nice and bright and colorful. And it looks like we have a lot of people that are feeling this is stressful, people feeling it was challenging, little less say it's fun and exhilarating, but still a few. Um, I think if we ask this question again in a month, when we have more tools, we might see a little bit different response. Um, and then the scale, this was our linear scale. So you can see the different, um, this was how much experience do you have with Google tools? And we can see the bar graph across here um, to give us an idea. So it's a great way to collect information. And then for our write-in question at the, at the end, um, you can see nobody did a real big paragraph, but we've got different size responses. Um, so I just wanted to look at these real quick. So how to form, uh, this question, this first question I saw earlier, I'm not sure who asked it, um, but how to get a form question back if someone deletes a question. 
Um, is there a revert option? Let's talk about that at the end. If you're here and you ask that question, ask me again at the very end and we'll try to answer that. Um, the best way to collect the answers for reviewing and evaluating student results, that's something we just talked about. Um, more about what I can do, how to use Google Forms, making different quizzes. We're going to talk about all that next. So this is one way to view the responses is in this graphic form. And the last thing I want to show you is that always up here in the top right corner, you have the option of creating a spreadsheet to go along with your form. So if I click on this, if I've never created a spreadsheet before, it's going to ask me what I want to name my spreadsheet or where I want the answers to go. Um, in this case, I've already created the spreadsheet. So you can see it gives me the date that the, the answers came in. And then I have this nice organized um, Google Sheet that shows me where I can compare the answers. Okay, so the spreadsheet, if you have this created in your Google Drive, the form, when you create the spreadsheet, it will create it right next to the form. So you can always go back and forth through your drive as well. All right, so let's get ourselves back to, um, I think I just saw a question of what if, let me open this thing up again. What if you would like the names attached to the answers? Um, if you would like to do that, you have to put the question in your form that says, what is your name? As long as you do that, then the names will be attached to the answers. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So we're talking about Google Forms and I've basically come up with a list. I did some research um, online and some of the stuff that I and my colleagues have used uh, these forms for. Um, and I've divided these up into three areas. We have procedural stuff, which is, you know, collecting information, taking attendance, things like that, which we'll look at how to do that. We've got assessments, which I know several of you asked, how do we do the assessments in here? We're going to look at those, and there's different ways to do it. And then the kind of fun stuff that you can do for activities and things like that. So we're going to look at all three of these sections. Um, the first thing I want to do before we get started there is I'm just going to open up this practice form that I created. And I want to go through here and just show you a couple of things um, with forms. So when I'm showing you the other stuff, you know what I'm talking about. So as you can see, this one I've kind of decorated up a little bit. We've got a banner. Um, we've got a name here. When you create your form, you're going to have this first part pop up, section one, and it's going to ask you, what do you want to name your form? Okay, this is what it's going to come up when you send this to students or post it in your classroom or anything else. And so you put your name and then you have a place to give a description of what the form is about, um, what it's being used for, any specific information that you need to give. Um, and then to create a question, we have this bar next to it here. So the plus at the top, if you click that, it creates a blank question for you to fill out. And inside that question, you've got several options. You can create your question or your statement or whatever you're going to put here at the top. If you want that description, like I showed you on the other um, form, you click down here on the three bars, or the three dots, sorry, not bars, dots, sometimes called the skinny snowman, um, and you choose description. Okay, description gives you an extra line to put some additional information in. Um, and then the way that this looks down here, the body of this question is going to depend on the type of question you choose. So up here in the right hand corner is your drop down menu to choose your different types of questions. It always defaults to multiple choice. So if you want something other than multiple choice, you're going to need to go in here and click different things. Um, in addition to the nine different um, types of questions or responses, questions you can ask, you can also choose to just ask for the date or the time, okay? And these will just put, that's, that's all it puts up is what is the date, what is the day and the year. Um, so you can do that if that's something you're choosing to collect. Um, you also have the options here of importing questions from other forms that you've already created. You can add a title 
So if I click on add a title, it gives me the same box that I had up here at the top. So I can once again do another title. Um, you can insert an image. So if I click on this, I have my choices. I can take a picture with my camera. I can upload something. I can enter a URL. There's all sorts of things from my drive. We could do a Google image search. Maybe we want an image of a cat. I can choose one. Let's choose this white guy here and say insert. And it's going to put when it thinks about it. A big picture here. So this is not attached specifically to a question. This is just putting an image in your form. So you might use this if you're going to put one image and then ask multiple questions about that image. Um, you can put a title for it. So that's one of the things you can do. You can also do the same with a video. Um, and then you have a section down here where you can add a new section. So remember I told you that if you don't put sections, then when you send out the form, they can see the whole form at the same time. Um, you're not dividing up the house, the pace of what they're answering. By putting uh, sections, it makes them answer one set of questions first, and then they get to see the next set of questions. So different things you can do there. You also have, like I said, up here at the top, you can, you can toggle between the questions and the responses. And then up here at the top, you have a little bit more things that you can do. Um, to customize it, to change the color, you've got this little color palette looking icon. And this allows you to upload an image. If you upload an image, image it's going to put it here where I have these jelly beans or jelly bellies, whatever they are. Um, if I want to change that, I'm going to click here. Google has a whole bunch of images already loaded in here. Um, if you don't like the ones that are here, you can upload from your computer. And you can also um, look at, oh, these are all the images that are on it. So this, this gives us just the pictures that I have saved on my computer. So maybe I want to change it. And I like this guy, this blue one here. I'm going to insert. I could choose, because that's a background, it's bigger than the space. So I can choose which area I want to have for my background and say done. All right, it's going to change that. And notice that once it changed that, it also changed the whole color scheme of my form. So um, it's going to choose colors out of your picture to give you choices. You still have a few choices. Maybe I like the darker color blue, but it's all going to be blue because my heading is blue. And you can also change the background color here, the main background color. Um, go darker or lighter. It doesn't give you a huge amount of selections, but you do have some choice. And then the last thing that you can adjust when you're customizing your form is the font style. What I have right now is basic. You can go playful. You can go, there's not a whole lot of choices. You can go formal. You can go, should you choose it, what they call decorative. However, since a lot of our young people don't know how to read cursive, I tend to generally stick with basic. It's easier to read, but how, depending on what you're using it for. Um, I've done invitations using Google Forms where I wanted something more fancy, where I've used the cursive. Um, and so you can really update your form a lot. Um, if you click on this eyeball, it gives you an opportunity to see what your form is going to look like to the people you're sending it to. So you can go through and you can practice filling in the questions and make sure that it's going to do what you want it to do. So that's the preview. I'm going to leave that. Um, and then the last thing up here, this little cog looking thing, this is your settings. And in here we have three different types of forms. So general, we can collect email addresses if we want. Um, we can give response receipts. If you choose that, it lets you say response receipts, which will send an email to the person that's submitting the form saying that they've submitted it. Um, for sign in, if you're part of the EdMDelt um, domain 
and you want to limit this to students who have an NMDELT email address, you can click this. Okay, if you want it to be available to anybody that has any email address, you're going to click um, take that off. And then anybody that you send the link to can use it. Uh, you can also limit it to one response, or if you leave this unchecked, they can respond as many times as they want. Um, you can choose, if you don't click this, then once they've submitted it, they're done, they've submitted it. Um, if you click this, then they can go back into the form that they just submitted and change their answers. So again, depending on what you want to do with it. Um, and you can also allow, now this is what the respondents can see. So you can also let them see a summary of what's going on with that form. If you go over here to presentation, this is just how the form is presented. So you can show them a progress bar that tells how much of the, the form they've completed. You can shuffle the question order. So if you're using this as a quiz or, or some kind of questionnaire of some sort, you can click and tell it to shuffle the question order so they get a different order each time. Um, you can also show the link to submit another response. So um, I generally keep that clicked unless I only want them to do one response, then I'll take that off. Um, and then down here, you have the option at the bottom. Remember, this is on the presentation tab. When Once they've submitted a form, once they've submitted the form, they're going to get a response saying whatever you want it to say. If you don't put anything in here that says, thank you for submitting a response or uh, please come back again and try another form, whatever whatever you want to say, there's a general one here that says your response has been recorded. That's just the generic one that they get. But you can change this. You can put links in here, and I'll show you some examples of that in a little while. Um, and then the last one we have, this is fairly new, is the quizzes. Um, if you want to make your form into a quiz, all you got to do is toggle that on and say make this a quiz. Um, what that does is it allows you to put uh, answers in there and responses so that if they get a correct answer they get a certain response if they get an incorrect answer they get a different response um, this locked mode now this only works if they're all using Chromebooks it does not work on regular computers or cell phones or anything like that so if by chance you have a whole group of students taking a quiz all on Chromebooks you can turn on locked mode and it keeps them from leaving the quiz and going to other pages. But keep in mind, that only works with Chromebooks. Um, release grade. You can choose to show them the grade immediately after each submission. So they'll see if they got the question correct or incorrect as soon as they submit the question. Or you can choose later. If you choose later, um, then they'll get either um, a result at the very end of the quiz or it might come to you to review. If you use any questions that are not um, closed questions, like a multiple choice question or a true or false or a checkbox, um, if you do anything else like an essay question or anything like that, Google can't check those. So they will grade all of the questions except those, and then you'll have to go in and put a score for the writing portions of it. So your choice, how you want the grades re released. And then um, you have a choice of what the respondents can see. Did they see the questions they missed or the correct answers, the point values? You can take those on and off. So the quizzes are kind of fun. And then always remember to save your choices at the end. So that's pretty much all the buttons um, with the exception of the send button. Let's look at that real quick. Um, you can send a form through email, through a link, or get an embed code if you're embedding it into a, a website or something like that. Um, you can email it directly to people through here. If you're not emailing it directly through here, you're going to want to get a link and put that into your email. Um, you can also, if you're emailing it directly from here, you can choose to include the form in the email. So when they open the email, they're automatically going to see the form and be able to fill it out right there. If you do not include it in the email, then the email will just send them a link and they'll have to click on the link 
and then go in and, and do it. Um, down here, you have add collaborators. So keep in mind that any links or any of these things that you do up here are not going to give you a link to the editable form. They're going to give you a link to the fillable form. Okay. Also, if you go up here to the top and you copy the address line and use that as a link, you can do that. But it's not going to link to your editing form. It's going to link to the fillable form. If you want somebody else to be able to edit your form and work with you on that same form, you have to add them as collaborators. Okay, so you can just choose an email or add them by emails up here or name, click done, and it will send them a link. Okay, so they have to be collaborators if they're going to work on the form with you. All right, Mariah, do we have any questions at this point before I go on? No, there are no questions. Okay. All right, so let's look at the fun stuff now. What can we do with this? So we're going to look at procedural stuff first. Get that stuff out of the way. Um, the first idea is to do surveys. Um, find out what you want to know. Okay, we've all done surveys before. Sometimes they're to find out a good meeting time. Sometimes it's for a potluck for our colleagues. Sometimes it might be to decide when the best time, especially with us working online, when is the best time for my students to come to class? You might send them a survey. Um, you might use this in a project if you're doing some kind of statistics or mathematical um, assignments where they need to survey people and have um, data to use. So surveys are a great way to use Google Forms. Um, logs, not this kind of logs, the kind that you log in. <laughs> um, so. Logs can be used for any number of things, exercise, nutrition, reading, homework. Um, I have used this for both reading logs and homework logs where a student can, especially with us working online, where they perhaps read a book for a certain amount of time and they're going to log in and tell me what they read about. Okay, that's a good way to use the logs. Um, homework. If they're doing homework outside of one of the programs that we're actually using and you want to see what they're doing, they can log in and they can tell you what time they started, what time they stopped, and what they worked on, maybe what they learned. It depends on how many questions you want to put on here. Um, but there's lots of different things that you can use a log for besides starting a fire. Okay. This is one of my favorites, an exit ticket. So this is an, actually a formative assessment tool. I'm sure most of you have heard that term before. Um, not using a regular quiz, but just getting an idea of what our students are doing and if they're making progress. Um, I've used this as an exit ticket in class before when we were doing face-to-face -face classes so that we finish the class and we take the last five minutes, they can go into this form and just tell me what they learned that day. And then the last question would be, um, is there anything that you feel you need help with or that you're confused about? So, you know, different questions depending on what information you want to gather. But it's a good way to finish a class. You can do this in an online setting as well. Um, you can always make an exit ticket and embed it into your, or put the link into your Google Classroom and ask them, you know, at the end of our face-to-face -face class, please go to the exit ticket, click on the link and fill it out. It's a very easy way to collect information and to keep up with what your students are thinking as opposed to just what you're thinking they're thinking. Um, attendance. I have used Google Forms as an attendance, either log in or log out um, in many different settings. I've used this in um, conferences when I've done conference presentations so that I can gather email information on the people that were there and names and know who was there. I've also used it in class and I know as instructors you probably have your favorites. Do you either have them sign the attendance sheet when they come in or do you wait and make sure they're all still there at the end and have them do it when they log out? An easy way to do this is to have a laptop or a tablet with you in class log into this attendance sheet and either as they come in or as they go out they fill it out 
That way you know that they were actually there. They can't log into it from some other location um, because they won't have the link, but you can gather that information. This may or may not be helpful in our online situation now, but I'm sure if anybody, if we put our minds to it, we could probably figure out a way to do it. Um, rubrics, this one is kind of fun and I hadn't thought about this before until I found this idea. Um, but creating a rubric in Google Form is an easy place to evaluate your students' um, your students writing or their activities. And I was also thinking this might be a good tool to use even for peer-to-peer -peer reviews. Because if you look at this example, and let's see if we can make this a little bigger. It's pretty small. Okay, so somebody was asking about names. It's very simple. Just put student name. You can put it as separate if you choose and put first name and last name, but collect their name. This is a uh, short answer choice question. Um, content. Maybe content is something that we're reviewing. Um, maybe we want to give something to our students and we want them to review it. We can set it up to where they have to, okay, they're going to look at this, they're going to have a guideline, and they're going to choose. Or you can do this. Um, so very simple rubric here, just the content. Do they, did they do a one, a two, or a three? You can have a space for feedback on the content. Then we can go to the next thing we're looking at, which might be design. So this is just an example. It's very short. You can make this as long or as short as you want. But a rubric is a really kind of interesting way that I never would have thought of using this. Um, so rubrics. And I think that's the end of my, oh, no, but I have one more. Whoops, back up. The daily check-in. Um, with us, especially with us working online with our students, it's more important than ever for us to keep the communication open between us and our students. What better way than to have a form? Each day or each week, depending on what you want to do, have them go in and fill out a check-in form. Even if they're not doing their homework, even if they're not attending class, at least you know they're still participating in some way, shape, or form. And this daily check-in can be used um, a lot like that exit ticket. You can ask them, what have you worked on this week? What have you learned this week? Um, what's one exciting thing or one thing that you're excited about that you learned from all the lessons you did this week? Um, you could also have a space in there where they can tell you if there's something they're confused about, if there's something they feel they need more instruction on or more help on or anything like that. So a daily check-in might be a, a daily or weekly. I should have put weekly on there. But a check-in kind of form for your students, another good way to use this. So let's go to the next part, which is assessment. And I know a lot of you are interested in assessment. So auto-graded quizzes, okay? We talked about that a little bit earlier um, when I was showing you the form. But uh, Mariah, can you go ahead and put up that other link into the chat, please? Okay, so we're going to take a quick quiz. It's only five questions. I want you to see what it looks like from the student point of view, and then we'll go into it and we'll look at how to make it or how I, how I made the quiz and what you can do. So it looks like Mariah went ahead and put the, the link in there. So we're going to give you two minutes. Go ahead and fill out the quiz the uh, quiz and then we'll look at the results oops
Okay, we've got about 30 seconds left. And then we'll go ahead and look at the form. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the form real quick, and I'm going to speed this up just a little bit because we're getting close to out of time. Um, but this is a quiz. I went over um, earlier how you can go up here to the cog, go to quizzes, and say make this a quiz. So that's what I did. Um, I did put the option of showing you the answers immediately after each submission and to let you see the missed questions, the correct answers, and the point values. It's just so you know what you were seeing when you were looking at that. And I'm just going to X out of this real quick. Um, and let's look at the responses. So from the quizzes, this is what I can see um, as far as the responses. So I get a, re a thing that shows the points. Now, you can do it with or without points. Um, I chose five questions and 20 points just to make it easier. Um, but we can see that um, total point distribution, 60% are uh, of the six respondents. So we've got six of them. What am I looking at? Scored points on um, count one, count one. Oh, we had eight. That's why. Okay, six people were up in the 60% range, one person in the 40 and one person in the 20% range. Okay, so you can see that. Um, it shows you frequently missed questions. So here, um, these are the two questions that were missed. I can see everybody's name who responded. I can see how many types of questions are available. So I could see that most people said nine, which is awesome. We had one person that said eight. I did cover that. <laughs> um, true or false? When making a quiz in Google Forms, you must use multiple choice questions. And that is false. I. Uh, Miss made a mistake on that one. So I apologize. So all of you that got faults on that one actually got it correct. So good point about going back and checking your quiz before you give it out. Um, if you're happy and you know it, you should. And this was a checkbox one. So I can see what everybody answered. And it looks like everybody got it wrong because in the checkbox answer, they have to get exactly the ones that you chose. And I actually chose all of these because if you hadn't had a chance to watch the video, they were making up things as they went along. So that was kind of a trick question. I know Amy cried foul probably on that one. Um, <laughs> but yes, so just an example of ways that you can do, but you can see in this bar graph form who chose which answers. Um, and if you hover over it, I believe it shows you just the count, not the exact people. Um, but if you want to see exact, remember you can always go to individual and you can look at each individual person. So here, this is Adrian's. I can go down and see exactly what Adrian chose on all of the questions, which is nice. You can also go to that spreadsheet now I have not created a spreadsheet for this yet, so I want to show you how this is. It, you have a choice. You can create a new spreadsheet, or if you have another spreadsheet that you've been using other forms on and you want it to just create a new page in that spreadsheet, you can choose select an existing spreadsheet and click select. And then it's going to show you all the spreadsheets that you have in your drive. And you can choose. I have a lot, so I'm not going to choose one of those. Um, but I could choose one and add to that spreadsheet. So generally, what I do is just create a new spreadsheet, say create. It's going to take a second to link it. So it says linking the spreadsheet. 
and we're going really slow here. So I'm not going to wait for that because we need to move on. We'll come back over to that in a few minutes and you can see the spreadsheet. All right, so that's auto-graded quizzes. It tells the student what they did. It tells you what they did. Um, you choose the correct answer when you're making the question. Another kind of assessment you can use. So this one was an idea I pulled off the web, flipped, or in our case, now we're doing distance learning assessment classrooms. Um, many teachers do activities where they just have a student watch a video and then they ask comprehensive questions about that video. You can use this as a, as a formative assessment or a, an actual assessment. Um, as part of an assignment or as an assignment in itself. So you can see this one, um, you give directions up here, they've put the video in, which you can play directly from the form, and then they've asked questions and submit. So if this is something that you wanna use with your students, you could make this as just an individual assignment, or you could use this as part of a larger assignment. If you're using Google Classroom or something like that, you can take the link and put it into Google Classroom for the students to click on after they've done or before they've done other parts of the assignment. So that's kind of a fun way to do it. The video feature is really nice. Okay, look, we finally got our form up here. Um, so from that quiz that we just did a few minutes ago, you can see exactly what score each person got. So uh, somebody earlier was asking about names. So on here, we can see the names of the student. We can see the scores that they got out of uh, what per number out of whatever points we gave them. And then you can see all lined up in nice orderly fashion, again, what the answers were to your questions. So it's a nice um, versatile way to look at different parts of your form. All right, so back to the choices here. We did the flipped classroom assessment. We can also use it for a quick assignment or a grade log. Um, when I was looking at this, I was thinking that this is probably a little more useful in a face-to-face -face class, um, but I'm sure there are ways. As I was thinking about this, um, this might be a good way to take attendance for your class. I did see someone else on there was asking about attendance. Um, so what this is, what the original idea for this was, is if your students were doing an activity or an assignment in class, you would have a tablet or a laptop or even your phone, and you could walk around and you could mark whether they did it or not or how they did on it, give them their scores. Um, let me show you this example here. Um, so I, I altered this a little bit to fit what I'm doing. And this is where I got the idea that it might be a great way to do attendance as well. So what I've done, I teach five classes during the week. So I've just put a choice. And remember, this is for me to use, not for my students. So I would choose when I was filling this out, maybe we're doing my Tuesday writing class. And maybe instead of an assignment, this is just attendance. So I'm just gonna type in here attendance and maybe put the date. I didn't think to put the date when I was making this, but we could put a date for this. Um, and then instead of student one, student two, student three, what I would do ahead of time is put each of my students' names in here. Um, then all I have to do is go in and put a, yay, a Y for yes, an N for no, or whatever we choose, yes. And then I have a record once I submit it of who was in the class on that day. So it goes back to submit another response. If I need to use it again right away, I can. Um, if I wanna see, since I created this, I can click on this little editing thing. You guys won't see this because you're not collaborators on my form. Um, but if I click on that, it takes me to the editable, editable version and I can go look at my responses. Here's my response sheet. So now I can see that in my Tuesday writing class, what I was looking at was attendance. And I can see for each student that they were there that day. So if I have another attendance form, maybe I'm putting information at Alasis. This is a good um, 
easy way for me to just keep all my information together. Okay, so that, let's get out of here. And uh, we're getting close to the end here. I have two more things I want to show you, um, or maybe three. Um, let's jump into the, this is the creative part of this, the fun part of this. So sharing ideas and professional development. We all have different ideas, different activities we do with our class, lessons, things like that. You could create a, we could create a forum for that where anybody that wanted to could go in, put their ideas in. If everybody has access to the spreadsheet, you can go in and see what ideas your colleagues have. Kind of a fun uh, idea, but I really want to get to these uh, two at the end. A choose your own adventure story. Um, I know that sounds a little childish, but it can be fun. Sometimes it's fun to be childish. Um, this instructor created a choose your own adventure, obviously for a, a younger crowd, um, but it's called Journey to be a Mage, and it has this young Arthur. He's going, it has, so it has a story up here, and Arthur has to complete some activities in order to get to the end of the, the task or the end of the game. So his first test is to cross a canyon log. They drew their own little pictures here to put in. Um, to keep his balance, he must solve this equation. So you've got two choices here. I'm going to choose the correct answer this time. And down at the bottom, we have next. So they use the sections to do this so that they could only see one part at a time. And since I did this correctly, it says success, he crossed safely, and it gives me the next task with another hand-drawn picture. Um, now, look what happens if I do it incorrectly. I choose the wrong answer, and I click Next. And it says, wrong. Arthur got lost, but he found a well that will take him back. She gives them a little bit, a little tip or hint about how to solve it. And the student, in this case, can choose either to go back and do the question again or just say, no, I'm not going to do it again, but I know what I did wrong and move forward. So either way, if they go back, choose next, and it takes them back to the question again so that they can fill it out again. So this is kind of a fun way. I never would have thought of a choose your own adventure with math, um, but it's really interesting. I'm assuming this is something that you could do with almost any topic. Sorry. Um, so choose your own adventure. Now, the last one I want to show you, and then I'm going to let you guys go. The Amazing Race Google Style. I was super excited when I found this, and I can't wait to play it. Um, if you've never seen the uh, show, which I actually haven't watched this, but apparently it's teams. They have tasks they have to do in order to um, win the prize. And so we're going to do this Google Style. And this pink one here, this is the one that I found on the web. This is a not. This is geared towards professional development, and you can see the link goes to a Google slide presentation. They have their intro page. It tells them that they're going to do five tasks in this. Um, they're giving awards of badges so that they know what they're going to get when they finish. And then this third page is all instructions. Now, this particular one uses all different Google tools. They've used, they're using Maps. They're using Google+. Plus, then they're using Google Forms. But the way that they're submitting it is through Google Forms. So one thing I want to show you real quick is this particular form has been turned off. Um, so it still goes to this page, but it says that this form is no longer accepting responses. You can do that on your forms too. There's a toggle switch I'll show you in just a second where you can just turn the form off if you're done receiving um, responses to it. Um, but that's that's the professional development one. They have other resources for people to use for these tasks down at the bottom. and. With that form, they would have got the next task once they filled out the completed the form. The one that I created, this is more geared towards our students. Um, we've been working on geometry, so I created a geometry challenge. Um, for this task, they're going to have five tasks to complete to win the prize, and I've shown the icons that I created. And so now we can go to the second page. This is task one, which is called Triangle Tangle. And then on the third slide, I have, uh, you can see I like bright colors, um, but you can see that 
I have um, the instructions on here. So what I want them to do is to take selfies, something our students like to do, with each of the four different types of triangles. The triangles must be found in the real world and not drawn. So they have to go on a little scavenger hunt. Once you've completed this challenge, submit your photos in this form. So I've created a form to go along with it, triangle challenge. And this is another type of question that you can use in here. It allows them to upload a file. So here they can select their picture from their phone or their computer, upload it here. And once they've done, they're gonna click upload and they have to fill out all five of them or four of them and then submit. Um, I'm gonna go to this uh, editing page because I wanna show you what it looks like on our end. So when you choose file upload in the multiple choice section, it allows you, you can, you can leave it unchecked and they can put any kind of upload they want in there. For me, I want specifically pictures. I don't want them uploading documents or PDFs or anything like that. So I put image. Um, I only want them to give me one picture per submission. So I limited that. You can say they can put five pictures, 10 pictures. Um, so you can let them do more. For this particular one, I only wanted one. And down at the bottom, it tells us that forms can accept up to one gigabyte of files. So that's per form. So we don't want to have huge numbers, giant, large files. So you can limit the amount of megabytes that they can upload per file. Um, so I just left it at the, the general one, which is 10. Um, and that's, so that's what it looks like when you give it to them. And... The other thing that I did for this triangle challenge, whoops, let's see, let's get out of here. Let's go to responses. No, not responses. I'm not gonna be able to see that there. Let's go here and under presentation, remember I said that you can change your confirmation message. So in my confirmation message, once they submit this, it's gonna say, congratulations on completing your first task. You may now progress to task two Polygon Playground by going to this link here. So they can either type this link in or they can copy and paste it into their browser and go to the next task. Okay, and so I've created a second task, Control C. They're gonna go up here, type it in or copy it and enter. And this is gonna take them to my second slide presentation, which I haven't created much of, just the first slide which is gonna be Polygon Playground. And so I'll do this the same way. Put whatever the activity is, um, give them the instructions and then send them on their way and give them a new form to submit those answers. I think this has a really exciting, it has um, great potential for lessons and reviews and just to have fun with your students and keep them engaged. I have noticed that my students, since I've been doing more activities like this with them, they tend to be more engaged and more willing to come to class. And they also somehow seem to be more willing to do the other activities that aren't so fun. Um, so I've found them doing more, more work in their ed ready and more work in other Google, Google Classroom um, lessons that I've been giving them. So Google Forms, that is my presentation for today. You can go forth and impress your students with your amazing use of Google Forms. Um, I'm gonna open it up real quick. I know we're already at one o'clock. If you need to leave, feel free. Um, if you have any questions, now is the time to answer it or ask them. So do we have any questions, Mariah? Um, I think you answered the one, uh, can logs be used to track attendance? Okay, yeah, we did answer that. We've uh, actually seen like three different ways to do attendance. Right. So uh, this is a pretty versatile tool. Does anybody else have any questions I can answer for you? Um, how did you put the timer in the quiz? Good question. I went to, um, I went online and I typed in, two, let's see, what did I type in? Two minute, right there. I typed in two minute timer and all of these little videos came up. 
I went up here and I just chose videos. So it shows me only the videos and leave the site. Okay, so I had all these videos. I chose one, um, doesn't matter which one, you open it. And I'm gonna pause it. And I just take the, the address bar up here at the top, the URL, copy it. And then in your presentation, so let me, let me grab another presentation real quick. Let's go to here. I know there's a presentation in here. Let's go back to this presentation that I did. Um, on your slide, so let's create a new slide here. Um, all I did is I go to insert video. It's going to say by URL. You paste the URL there and enter, and there's your timer. And it gives you choices over here. When you insert a video, if you don't want the whole video, you could tell it to start at a certain time and end at a certain time. If you only want to play a portion of a video, you can set it to autoplay when presenting, which means it'll start playing as soon as you open that slide. And what I did with these, because I didn't want the loud music playing, is I muted the audio. So you have some choices there. And then it's it's on the screen. You can um, do a couple different things with it. I, let's see, I did this. So you can make it larger or smaller. You can move it around. Um, you can also put borders around it. So I chose, I think, a red border. So you can put a border around it if you want to. So it's really easy to do. It's just a video. Um, so this particular timer, I can't set to different times. I would have to look up a different timer. Um, but very easy to put in there. Any other questions? I believe that is it. All right. Um, the last thing I have for you here is just don't forget about our other pro professional development webinars. Um, like I said earlier, I see a lot of familiar faces on here, people that have been to these webinars. Um, but keep in mind, we are putting on webinars on Mondays. Um, Mondays at noon, we're covering best practices in distance learning. Um, Wednesdays, we are covering online teaching tools or programs. Thursday, we are covering ESL or ELA topics. And then Fridays, we're doing the Google Fridays. So um, there is a link on here. And I did not give that one to Mariah. So <laughs> um, I'll leave this up for you if you want to write it down. Um, but this link will take you to a calendar of events, to a website that has our calendar of events and shows what is coming up. So that is all I have today. And I thank you all very much for attending. Go forth and have a great weekend. Perfect. Thank you, Kristen. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.